Okay, so now you've made the investment in purchasing some hair for yourself, it's really important that you're going to look after that. And a really common question is, how long does a wig last? Well, this is really dependent on base materials, on hair type, and can be as little as three months up to three or four years. So your wig provider can help you around that, but a lot of it's got to do with you and your lifestyle and how you're looking after your hair. So Sarah. So one of the things uh, we find important with the wigs is to make sure that at the end of every day you're going to give it a good brush. Don't be afraid, the wigs are a little bit sturdier than you think they are, but still be gentle. Um, we recommend brushes that are softer on the bristles that are going to bend in a little bit more rather than something that's going to be really hard on the hair. Give it a good brush at the end of every day. You want to make sure you're getting those knots out. For those of you with longer hair and what I do with my own hair is I might grab it and then brush the knots out so I'm not putting too much strain on the roots up the top. If you've made the investment in a good quality wig for your child, it's really important that you are actually going to look after it. It's like handing a beautiful silk dress to a five-year-old and telling them <laughs> to look after it. You have to take the responsibility for your children's hair until they're old enough to learn how to do that properly themselves. Absolutely. And one of the things you can do is if you've got your kids going off to school and you're worried that they might take the wig off at lunchtime or toss it in the bag as soon as they get there, you can use little ultra hold tapes or so just pop a little bit at the front or even at the back that's going to make them less likely to just pull the wig off and then pop it on at the end of the day when they see you. Yeah, teaching them how to put on their wigs properly is really important. important. And also teaching them that it's not a toy. Now we're going to talk about how to take your wig on and off so you can look after it. If you've got one of the net based wigs or one of the silicone grip wigs, the best way to put this on is to find your hairline. Generally speaking, that's about four fingers from the top of the nose. You're going to pop your wig on and then gently pull it around behind. On the net based wigs, they have little bendy wires to the side and bendy wires on your occipital bone where you can frame the wigs into your face. Then if you're taking off the wig, the best way to do this is to pull it from behind and lift it up off the head. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I've showed everyone before how to um, take on and put off a suction wig. I'll do that again. I'm um, just paying closer attention to where your fingers are going. So instead of pulling the hair, like being the wig lady, I know it's probably really hard for you to, you're going, don't do that to it. So you don't want to use the hair as a handle, like pull out and up. You want to make sure that you're just maneuvering the cap with the base. So keeping your fingers clear, putting it underneath the cap, peeling it off. Again, don't put your hands in the hair, gripping it and using it as a handle. Just hold the edge of your cap, gravity feed your head down into it, being gentle and then the palms of your hands on the top to wiggle it. Don't be dragging your fingers down. Some of the really detrimental things with all types of um, wigs I think is if you are a fiddler. So if, you've, yeah. if you're twirling and twirling you're going to get hair loss from the section at the root where you're touching that hair all the time. Um, same as if, you, if you're perhaps an older lady with a shorter hairstyle, you like volume and you're zhuzhing your hair all the time, the more repeatedly you touch that, you will get hair loss from around the sides and no one wants to see that. It can actually be quite an emotional experience when you've got alopecia you on your alopecia. Your on yeah, your exactly. Another really um, important thing to know is you can sleep in wigs occasionally and look your lifestyle might mean that you choose to sleep in wigs every night but you will kill them you will have their lifespan so if you just have a think the weight of your head on a pillow in your lovely hair every night is just going to rub hair away from there some wigs can be repaired and it will extend the life lifespan of your wig but it's probably better off not to do those damaging behaviors anyway I also find that if you, you might get an itch on the top of your wig, the best way to manage that, and I know it can be a little bit tricky if you're out in public, but try and be really gentle. If you consistently scratch on the one part of your wig, you will find you do get a patch and that's going to feel like you're getting alopecia all over again. So if you're at home and in the comfort of your own environment, we recommend that you take the wig off and have a scratch or if you can just duck your head under the net so you're not scratching the actual wig. Yeah. I think um, I kind of, with my clients, let them, you know, really enjoy it for the first week. It's a very tactile thing. It feels lovely. You need to kind of get all those movements about having hair again, but then become really conscious of where your fingers are going. Be aware of what you're doing.
completely. The better you look after the wig, the longer it's going to last you. And we understand they're a big investment, so we want them to last as long as they can for you. So probably another consideration is if you're lucky enough to have more than one and you're traveling, um, yep. with the suction based wigs, please don't fold it in four because it makes the wig lady really unhappy. We need to keep that mold the same size as your head and it, I really don't want it to be crushed. It is very durable material but much better to tuck it inside, perhaps put um, an item of clothing inside and keep it in the head form. The other thing that you can do too is you can keep the inside of the cap hygienically clean every day by wiping it out with an antibacterial wipe. Let's talk about heat. In terms of your synthetic wig, um, synthetic wigs are actually made from a plastic fibre, so all the same rules apply. You can't put your synthetic wig near the heat, so that includes heat tools such as um, hair irons or curling tongs or even blow dryers. You also need to be careful when you have your synthetic, synthetic wig in the sun or if you're saying you're an oven or a heater because it can cause those fibres to melt. Unlike synthetic fibre, um, human hair can um, have heat used on it. You do want to remember to treat it just like you would as if, if it was your own growing hair. So don't put a tong and leave it to burn the skin. Move it along the hair, hair follicle. And you can use heat protectant products as well that will protect your hair a little bit away from those styling tools. The biggest enemy I think Sarah would agree to is the sun of human hair. It's not growing, so eventually over time it's going to lighten and to fade. But you can colour correct that over the years as you go along. It's really important to know how to wash and care for your wigs. So we're going to hand over now to Victoria, who's been a hairdresser for over 25 years, and she's going to show you how to wash your wigs. Okay, so now that we've finished brushing the hair, which is really important to do before we wash it, so keeping the hand on the base, um, I always keep the thumb on the parting in case you want to move the hair around. So with the side part or a center part, you'll always know where it is. So I like to use a temperature of water, which is similar to what you'd shower with. So keep it warm, not too hot, not too cold. We do need to get rid of any pollution that's in the air or sweat and dirt and things like that. So we'll start by rinsing the hair underneath the tap. So we want to make sure it's nice and saturated through. So I'm going to start by using a balancing shampoo. This is going to help to clarify the hair, take out any pollution. If you find the hair is feeling particularly dry, I want you to skip the balancing and just go straight in with a hydrating shampoo. So to wash the hair, it's really important that you pat the hair and squeeze that product into it. Not forgetting the base as well. So that is what's going to be touching your skin. So we wanna make sure that that is nice and clean. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to rinse it out now. Okay, so now I'm going to use a little bit of hydrating shampoo, which is just going to help to keep the hair really hydrated and moisturized, which is the most important thing with the wig. You don't want the hair to dry out or feel dull or anything like that. So again, we're going to do the same thing where we're just patting the shampoo into the hair, squeezing it, making sure it's feeling nice and clean. And by the second shampoo, we will. It's always really important to do those two shampoos. So we're going to rinse the shampoo out now. Again, keeping the water temperature nice and warm. Giving it a really good rinse. We don't want any residue of shampoo left in the hair. Excellent. So just squeezing out a little bit of that excess water before we put the treatment conditioner on. Now, when you're squeezing the water out, you don't want to be twisting it because that could damage the hair. So just good firm squeeze and just getting that water out. Okay, so a little bit of treatment conditioner. Rub the conditioner into the hands and again, gently pat through. You want to try and get the conditioner all the way through from the roots to the ends, but don't use too much of it, otherwise you won't be able to rinse it out. So it's that fine line. Making sure you get it all through to the ends. And now we're going to rinse it out. Giving it a really good rinse because we want to make sure there's no residue left in there. If there's any residue of conditioner left in there, you might find that the hair feels really heavy and lank, whereas it's not. It's just the products left in there and then oil can stick to it and pollution and it's not very nice. 
Perfect. So we're just going to give it a really good squeeze, getting all that water out. And what I'm going to do now is just grab my towel and wrap this around it, giving it a good squeeze again, remembering no twisting. Perfect. So once the excess water has been squeezed out, I would give it a little bit of a brush at this point, just making sure there's no tangles or no knots. And this is going to help to prep it for blow drying. And I'm going to hand it over to the girls now. Washing synthetics is very different. Um, instead of showering it as you would with a human hair wig, you simply um, put a plug into a basin and you simply put the product inside the water and slowly dip it. I then think that they're put down onto a towel to dry off. So again, no blow dryers and no heat. As far as products are concerned, it's probably best that you see your individual wig provider to learn how to look after your synthetic hair properly. Just remember to treat your wig like it's your best friend so you'll get a longer life out of it. Love your hair and it will love you. And for more information on how to look after your wig or if you have any other questions, contact the AAAF.